Wide clavicles. Clavicle width defines the biomechanical width of the shoulder girdle and determines how broad the upper body appears before any muscle is added. Wider clavicles space the deltoids farther apart, enhancing the V taper and increasing the perceived size of the torso even at lower body weight. Mechanically, wider clavicles improve pressing leverage by reducing internal rotation demands on the shoulder joint, stabilizing the bar path during heavy bench and incline presses. These individuals achieve upper body aesthetics and strength more rapidly because their skeletal frame framework distributes muscle mass more effectively. Narrow clavicles compress visual width and reduce mechanical advantage in pressing, requiring more hypertrophy to create the same silhouette. Capped shoulders. Shoulder shape is heavily influenced by androgen receptor density, the concentration of receptors through which testosterone signals growth. Deltoids possess the highest density of any muscle group, and individuals with naturally elevated receptor sensitivity experience disproportionately rapid growth in all three delt heads. This results in a rounded, capped appearance even with moderate training training volumes. High androgen receptor sensitivity intensifies both hypertrophy and neuromuscular efficiency, enabling faster force production and improved shoulder stability. These traits compound to make delt development appear effortless in genetically advantaged lifters, while others require years of targeted volume to approach similar results. Narrow waist and enhanced taper. Waist width is largely determined by pelvic breadth, rib cage angle, and abdominal muscle thickness. A narrow waist enhances the contrast between the shoulders, lats, and torso, amplifying the V taper even at moderate levels of muscle mass. Mechanically, a smaller waist alters visual proportion far more dramatically than additional hypertrophy alone. Individuals with narrow waists can maintain visual aesthetics at higher body fat percentages because fat accumulation distributes elsewhere first. Conversely, wide or blocky waists, caused by thicker obliques, wider pelvises, or greater visceral mass, reduce taper and make the torso appear rectangular, regardless of shoulder development. Lat width and low lat insertions. Low lat insertions extend farther down the torso, creating a naturally wide back and enhancing the silhouette even at lower levels of hypertrophy. These individuals achieve a dramatic V taper early in their lifting career because their lats cover more surface area and pull the waist into tighter visual proportion. Mechanically, low lat insertions improve leverage during pull-ups, rows, and deadlifts by increasing horizontal pulling torque. This produces faster strength gains and more balanced back development, whereas high insertions limit both width and hypertrophy potential. Large rib cage. A large rib cage increases thoracic volume, expands the anchoring surface for pecs and lats, and enhances upper body fullness even before hypertrophy. This skeletal advantage creates the illusion of a larger torso and improves ribcage elevation during breathing and bracing under load. It also increases chest projection, making the upper body look fuller at rest. Small rib cages limit chest appearance and reduce the available area for muscular attachment, requiring disproportionate hypertrophy to achieve similar fullness. Low calf insertions. While high calf insertions limit visual calf development due to shortened muscle bellies, they create longer, more elastic Achilles tendons. But for muscle hypertroph and aesthetics, a low calf insertion means the calf muscle sits lower to the ankle. This allows more muscle to grow and bigger visual calves. Low quad insertions. High quad insertions reduce the muscle mass positioned near the knee joint, lowering rotational inertia during the swing phase of running. Therefore, a low quad insertion means more visible quad mass down toward the knee, resulting in a thicker, fuller quad appearance. Deep cut abdominals. The appearance of deep cut abs comes from thick rectus abdominis plates, tight tendinous intersections, and low central fat storage. These structural elements determine whether abs appear at higher body fat percentages. Individuals with deeply segmented abdominals maintain definition even during caloric surpluses because their abdominal wall protrudes more sharply through thin skin layers. This trait shortens cutting phases and allows year-round leanness with less effort whereas flat or shallow abdominal plates require more extreme dieting to achieve similar visual detail. Natural vascularity and high capillary density. Vascularity depends on capillary density, skin thickness, and fat distribution. Individuals with genetically high capillary networks exhibit visible veins early in training because blood vessels sit closer to the skin surface and expand rapidly during exercise. High vascular density also enhances nutrient delivery, metabolite clearance, and aerobic efficiency in working muscles, improving both hypertrophy and endurance. This trait creates an aesthetic advantage and a performance advantage simultaneously, especially in high repetition or metabolically demanding training. Fast twitch muscle fiber dominance. A high proportion of type 2 fast twitch fibers dramatically increases strength and hypertrophy potential. Type 2 fibers produce greater force, 
fatigue quickly, and grow significantly larger than type 1 fibers. Individuals with type 2 dominance respond strongly to heavy loads, explosive movements, and moderate rep ranges. Their hypertrophy onset is faster, their strength gains steeper, and their density more pronounced. In contrast, type 1 dominant lifters must rely on higher training volume and metabolically demanding protocols to stimulate similar growth because their fibers grow more slowly and to a lesser maximum size. Thin skin and subcutaneous fat distribution. Skin thickness and subcutaneous Spontaneous fat distribution very genetically and strongly influence muscular definition. Thin skin exposes underlying muscle separations, veins, and striations at higher body fat levels. Lifters with this trait appear leaner year-round and require less aggressive dieting to display definition in the arms, shoulders, and abs. Conversely, thick skin obscures muscle lines even when body fat is low, requiring deeper cuts to achieve the same visual effect. Subcutaneous fat patterns also dictate where stubborn fat lingers. Individuals with low Low central fat deposition maintain visible abs with minimal effort. Neuromuscular efficiency and motor unit recruitment. Neuromuscular efficiency refers to how effectively the nervous system recruits high threshold motor units during strength tasks. Genetically superior lifters exhibit synchronized firing patterns high recruitment speed, and reduced neural fatigue under heavy loads. These individuals often appear unnaturally strong for their size because efficient neural drive allows them to use a larger percentage of their muscle at once. This advantage also accelerates skill acquisition. Elite lifters stabilize bars more easily, maintain smoother bar paths, and generate high force without excessive practice. Neuromuscular efficiency is a major predictor of both early strength gains and long-term lifting potential. Androgen receptor sensitivity and hormonal responsiveness. Beyond total testosterone levels, androgen receptor sensitivity determines how strongly muscle tissue responds to hormonal signals. Individuals with high androgen receptor sensitivity experience amplified protein synthesis from the same hormonal environment. This leads to faster hypertrophy, easier maintenance of muscle mass during caloric deficits, and more pronounced training adaptations. Genetically low androgen receptor sensitivity reduces responsiveness even with adequate testosterone, making growth slower and requiring greater training precision. Androgen receptor density varies widely and is particularly impactful in androgen responsive tissues like deltoids, traps, and upper chest. Low myostatin expression. Myostatin inhibits muscle growth by limiting the number and size of muscle fibers. Individuals with genetically lower myostatin expression whether through natural variation or mutation, possess dramatically enlarged hypertrophy potential. Their muscle fibers grow faster, recover quicker, and maintain mass more easily during caloric deficits. Even slight reductions in myostatin expression can significantly elevate a person's hypertrophy ceiling. Those with high myostatin expression, conversely, struggle to add muscle regardless of training intensity. High red blood cell count and oxygen carrying capacity. A genetically higher red blood cell count improves oxygen delivery to working muscles and enhances AT ATP regeneration during prolonged sets or dense training blocks. High red blood cell availability supports superior endurance in high rep hypertrophy training and accelerates recovery between sets. This advantage becomes especially clear during supersets, drop sets, and metabolic hypertrophy protocols, where oxygen debt becomes the limiting factor. Individuals with higher red blood cell counts maintain performance deeper into sessions and recover faster globally. Low aromatase activity. Aromatase is an enzyme that converts testosterone to estrogen with high concentrations in adipose tissue. Individuals with genetically lower aromatase activity store less body fat for a given caloric intake and maintain higher testosterone levels due to reduced conversion. These individuals remain lean easily, avoid stubborn fat accumulation in the chest and abdomen, and maintain a more anabolic hormonal profile. Conversely, high aromatase activity predisposes individuals to fat gain and requires stricter diet control. Optimal hormonal rhythms. Some individuals exhibit highly stable circadian regulation of anabolic hormones such as testosterone, growth hormone, and IGF-1. Their hormonal peaks occur reliably during sleep and drop predictably throughout the day, creating consistent anabolic environments. This hormonal stability improves recovery, reduces stress hormone fluctuations, and optimizes protein synthesis. Lifters with irregular hormonal rhythms experience inconsistent recovery and require stricter sleep schedules to maintain comparable progress. High responsiveness to training volume. 
genetic differences in MTOR signaling, satellite cell activation, and muscular inflammatory response determine whether an individual thrives on high volume training. High responders adapt dramatically to large workloads, adding muscle quickly with multi-set, multi-exercise routines. Low responders progress more slowly and must rely on intensity or frequency rather than volume. High volume responders often exhibit rapid physique changes within months. Enhanced muscle pump to growth translation. Certain genetic profiles experience stronger anabolic signaling from cell swelling, particularly through heightened MAPK pathway sensitivity. When a muscle fills with blood during training, pressure on cell membranes triggers growth signals. Individuals who respond strongly to this pathway build muscle quickly from pump-based hypertrophy methods, such as high rep training, supersets, or short rest intervals. High testosterone baseline. Every individual has a genetically determined hormonal set point, that regulates average testosterone levels. Men with naturally higher set points experience more efficient protein synthesis, better recovery, and easier maintenance of muscle mass. Their testosterone also drops less under stress or caloric deficits. This trait magnifies the effectiveness of training by ensuring strong hormonal support for adaptation even in suboptimal conditions.